So also joining us from Washington is former national security prosecutor for the Justice Department, uh, Joseph Marino. Thank you so much for joining us, Joseph. As we mentioned, there is a chance that Democrats could get new witnesses since Republicans at this time appear to have enough votes to block them. From a legal perspective, what kind of role could witnesses play in this trial moving forward? We've only really talked about John Bolton, but, you know, there could be other witnesses as well. Sure. And good morning, Anne-Marie. Good morning, Vladimir. So basically, at the highest level, it's the collection of evidence, right? We heard so much that from the president's defenders that we haven't heard firsthand information as to, one, why was the aid to Ukraine initially held up, and, two, why was it ultimately released? Now, the House managers have presented their case. They say it was an illicit quid pro quo. The, the White House says, no, it wasn't. And, of course, the Democrats say it was released because the White House learned about the whistleblower, realized they pro probably had some trouble on their hands, and then quickly released it. We can't force the president to testify against himself, but we can say, look, there must be people who know directly from the president these two issues. Why was the aid withheld? Why was it released? And so that's the value of witnesses. Maybe it's John Bolton. Maybe it's Mick Mulvaney. Other names have been mentioned over at OMB and in the White House. So that's the value that they bring. And and as long as those questions remain unanswered because the witnesses or the documents are out of reach of the Senate, there's going to be that ultimate question of fact as to what actually happened. Would, would calling Hunter Biden as a witness do anything more than serve as a distraction? I mean, could he actually add to the argument here? I think it's difficult to say that Hunter Biden is completely irrelevant, because part of the White House defense is the president had a good-faith interest in looking into corruption. And the source of that interest, right, the, the basis of that interest, whether it was well-founded or not, is Hunter Biden's role at Burisma. So I, I think the Democrats do themselves a little bit of a disservice by saying, on the one hand, it's essential we hear from witnesses. but not all witnesses, and I think they're overly concerned about the Hunter Biden issue. Personally, I would embrace it. I don't think he hurts the case. He might be a little bit of a distraction, but let's face it, his information is already out there, so there's mm. not much more they can do to embarrass him on the stand. Yeah, that's a good that's point. That's true. Yeah. Um, so if uh, the senators vote to allow witnesses, could the president claim executive privilege over some of their testimony? Could he even block their testimony? The way we understand it, and we're not lawyers, is that uh, if you're investigating wrongdoing, you can't use the executive, you, you can't claim executive privilege if the Congress or the Senate is investigating some type of wrongdoing. Well, Vlad, first off, the president can and he will assert executive privilege. Whether that's a righteous assertion is another question. And the point that you raise about whether it's legitimate to raise executive privilege in the context of an impeachment investigation, that's another unanswered question. So you can expect that either way, though, there will be a vigorous assertion of executive privilege, and it will have to get worked out. And we heard from Lindsey Graham just a few minutes ago in a clip that you played that it will be a messy process. It will either go to the courts, and then that will take time, or it will go to the Senate itself, and you'll have the 100 senators, possibly with the chief justice weighing in, on individual questions of whether certain conversations or certain documents are protected by executive privilege. So, I, look, there's a good case that there should be witnesses, because what's wrong with finding facts? But I think you have to realize that whichever side you're on, if we go down that road, it will be a messy, nasty, time-consuming battle over executive privilege. But, Joseph, if—so let's say the president asserts executive privilege, but then Bolton's book comes out, and all the things that are in the book that the senators want to hear from him on the witness stand are now in the public space. I, I'm, he I'm, could still do it, though. Yeah. He, could still, he could still try. I mean, the thing about executive privilege is what we've seen with the president is is he sort of try, attempted to, and successfully, use it as a blanket mm -hmm. to sort of cover all Everything. conversations with a particular individual. It's typically used, as we've talked before, for, you know, individual conversations, individual right. subject matters. But I suppose he could say executive privilege, even though the book is already published, in order to put a halt to any further 
But we'll have Testimony? all the facts. The American people will have all the facts, or at least the facts but as you, John Bolton sees them. Yeah, but you can't cross-examine a book, hmm. right? And so if John Bo sorry, aren't you the attorney here? <laughs> yeah. I'm not. But is that the case? Like, you yeah, know, we're, the information, we're arguing like we're lawyers here. <laughs> the information would be out there, but without having John Bolton on the stand to say, well, how do you know this is accurate? How do you trust your memory? Or whatever they would mm, say. Right. Um, then it's easy to dismiss the information in the book. That's right. Look, as far as the manuscript, any drafts of the manuscript, the book itself, you know, the horse is out of the barn there, right? Privilege has been waived. That's all fair game. And frankly, if the House managers have not already subpoenaed that manuscript, they should, right? That's fair game. But the president can still assert that individual conversations are privileged. And so emails, text messages, anything within the confines of communications between the president and John Bolton and John Bolton's subordinates, the president can and will will still say he cannot go on the stand and talk about conversations I had with him. Now, that might fly, it might not fly, but that will be the ultimate question that will be posed either to judges in the various courts that, as it climbs through the process to the Supreme Court, or senators will have to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Joseph, could they, could they subpoena his notes? According to sources that we've spoken to, uh, Ambassador Bolton takes copious notes in real time. Mm -hmm. And so could you subpoena those notes, which would have dates, which would have times, which would have direct quotes, and enter that into the evidence? They could and they should. Could now, that be again, covered under executive privilege? Yes. I mean, that, it certainly huh. could. And again, it's going to come down to an argument. The, the, the broader you try to argue privilege, the less likely courts are going to respect it, right? Courts have said, look, executive privilege exists, but it's to be narrow and it's to be weighed against the public's right to have the underlying information. So back with the case of President Nixon, right? Nixon tried to withhold all of the Watergate tapes in their entirety. Ultimately, the Supreme Court said, sorry, while executive executive privilege is a legitimate claim, the public's right to know what's on those tapes supersedes that privilege. And ultimately, the Supreme Court said, you have to release them, and he did. So that would be the argument that both sides would be making here. The White House would say, look, I have the right to have privileged communications and get advice from my senior staff. The House managers would say, wait a minute, this is a, an issue of vital importance, right? What's more important than the trial of the president? We need that information. My take, the courts would ultimately side on the, on the side of releasing the information, but it will be time consuming. Mm -hmm. Right. Meanwhile, we're hurtling towards an election, right? right? Joseph, right. thank you so much. Thanks to you both.